Coach Andersy. Welcome to the Kent State Wrestling Talk, Episode 4. Big weekend this past weekend in Navy in Maryland at the Naval Academy. Coach, how did things go for the Kent State Golden Flashes? Uh, second week out of the gate for you guys. First full week for the full varsity. Second full week for the full varsity. Last week we went to Appy State. This week we're at Navy. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Third week technically. Then yeah, third week we technically. got Clarion. We got Mountaineer Invitational, which was uh, App State. Third week would be uh, 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 Navy and Mungia. Yeah. Mungia is three for three, right? Well, he he took a he took a third at um, Appy third, State. Third at App State because the NCAA champion was there from Stanford, so he's two for three. Yeah, but he didn't get to wrestle that guy. He ended up, you know, he ended up losing earlier on and ended up revenging his loss in the, for third and fourth. So he, he did a did a good job there. But as far as this week, he ended up uh, going to the Navy Classic. He ended up bringing home a championship. So it's his second championship. I believe his record's 14-1 and one at this point, which it's a pretty good record to have at this point in the year, regardless of who you are and what you are. And, you know, <laughs> it's hard to win matches in college wrestling. It's like anything. It's hard to win. So he's been doing a really good job for us. Are those all D1 matches? Because I know that the threshold in the past has been 17 matches, and then I think they took it down to 15 during, like, the COVID year. Is he at the minimum threshold for matches yet? The only place it might – he might not have but would be Clarion, but he wrestled a – he wrestled a, a Maryland guy. He wrestled a Navy guy. He wrestled a Pitt guy and someone else. I think all those matches count right now. Yeah, as of, as of right now, they all count. Well, so I did a D three match a couple weeks ago with uh, a D two D three match with uh, uh, Lake Erie College versus John Carroll, and it literally does you guys in the sense of how your qualification system is set up in Div Division One NCAA wrestling, it does you no good. It's actually detrimental for you guys to wrestle D two D three NAI and junior college guys. Is that a correct statement? Yeah, I, get, I, I depending on the person. Yeah, like you know, at some point, sometimes kids need to get need. Sometimes kids need to get matches, and it doesn't matter who it is, as long as they're getting matches and they're learning from them. Um, you get a guy like Jake Jake Ferry or Cody Kamara or even Enrique at this point, it doesn't do them any good to wrestle a Division two two or three guy. To be honest, it's just you know, there's so many negatives that could happen, and not a whole lot of positives that come out of it at this point. So you're I, right. Can I can I just tell you, I hate that. I don't like that at all. Because I know there's guys like like Josh Moore, Cleveland State are going to wrestle Lake Erie College. In the past, you've brought in Ashland, you've brought in Mercyhurst, you've brought in other schools, you know, Finley, Ashland. I mean, you yeah. had some duels at your place with those guys. Um, yeah. at, at this point, I just I don't like that that doesn't mean anything to you guys, and it can only be detrimental to like your 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 top thirty three ranked guys. It can literally only be detrimental. They can get hurt. Um, they can lose. And winning does them actually no good as far as their winning percentage, the threshold of minimum matches for NCA qualification. Yep. Is the minimum 17 still, Jim, or is it 15? Or where are we at with the minimum amount of matches for the minimum? I team? want to say it's 15 to 17. They changed it last. They changed yeah, it. It's, it's changed. I'm right. It's right in that area. It's in that area. Yep. You're close to it. So, you know, Enrique is at that threshold already. So <laughs> it's pretty good. You had some great competition this past weekend, but the big one on for me was I had Scott Moore on. So Lockhaven was there, right? They were. So you had some MAC teams there. You had Lockhaven, you had uh, Ohio, Ohio, you and you guys. So you got to see some of your guys' early on competition. And then you had Nebraska there, right? Nebraska was there. That's correct. Yep. Right? Because uh, Enrique beat, uh, I want to say, Wilson and Nebraska in the finals. It was pretty tough. I beat him in the semis. Semis. So, I mean, I was just looking – and then I saw Mikey Labriola beat his teammate who yep. beat Perrine in the semifinal. So they had an all Nebraska final at 74. Yep. Labriola is as tough as it can get. We all know he can win 174. I yep. mean, that guy's he's really good. So you guys got to see some really good competition. What do you think guys like Ferry got out of it? What do you think Kamara got out of it? What do you think uh, your other guys besides your top 33s got out of the Navy Classic, Jim? Well, I, you know, I think for our team, it's just, it's, it's about trying to be more consistent with the wrestling and two weeks back to back, as far as our starters, just getting, uh, you know, a handful of matches. And there's a whole bunch of different philosophies on how you can build your schedule and who you, who you can wrestle. And I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way. I know that if you go there and you're ready to wrestle and you compete real hard, you can end up like an Enrique and, you know, take away the clarion open because we don't make starters go. Enrique wanted to wrestle in that. 
Enrique would still be right around nine and one right now. So he'd be in pretty good position. He ended up going to the clarion. Um, so it just, it just depends on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. I've always gone with the philosophy that we were always going to be in better shape and we were going to be ready to wrestle more so than a lot of programs at the beginning of the year. So let's try to upset some teams. That's always been my philosophy or upset some guys, I guess you could say. I think it's easier to upset guys in tournaments than it is to go to a duel and wrestle a one-on-one duel and upset them. That's just my opinion. Um, I, I know that looking at our team now, next year I'm going to do some things different. I think I'm going to try to get our young guys to the Michigan State where they can wrestle in the sophomore. You know, there's two different divisions. And then maybe try to get a, a set of duels the week of uh, Appy State and then go to Navy. I, I think Navy's a great tournament the week before Thanksgiving. I've always liked it. You're going to guarantee, you know, we got it. We, we wrestled, we had guys wrestle five matches yesterday and we were out of there by, we were done by 345. So we were home by 1030, which is nice. Guys aren't trying to sleep on the bus. Guys aren't, you know, they're they're able to get some studying done if they want to. So there, there's a lot of things you got to think about. We went to Happy State and we caught that hurricane coming up. It took us like 11 and a half hours to get there. Um, we pulled into the hotel at 1145. We had to get up at 445 the next day for that, that to, to weigh in and everything. And there was just a lot of negatives that kind of happened with it being such a long drive, the weather. Um, we, got into a, we didn't get into an accident. There was an accident right in front of us. So we sat on the freeway for about an hour and a half, couldn't do anything. So like I said, it's just trying to build a schedule where you're not traveling too much, but you're seeing good competition. And the Navy, man, I, I just really enjoy the term. They get they put down eight mats. Usually you're going to see at least one one or two Big Ten teams. Michigan State was there and also Nebraska. So um, you, you know, we got to see two Big Ten t- tournaments. We got to see Stanford and Appy State, who's pretty darn good. We've seen, we got to see Air Force again. So it's just where you want to, you know, where you, what guys you want to see and, and how, what you're trying to do at the beginning of the year. Obviously it's super tough for you guys. When we talk about the big 10, you know, like the, the, the big 10 has won every national title since Oklahoma state won it in 2006. So Oh seven to 22, it's been either one of three teams. It's been Iowa, the Iowa Hawkeyes, Iowa state Buckeyes won one in 2015 and then uh Penn State is uh, they're on a run similar to the late 70s and 80s Iowa Hawkeyes right now. I think we could put them in the comparison with with those teams. Um I don't I feel comfortable with that. Uh but like it, it's really hard for you guys as a Mac school, right? Like no all Americans last year I was talking to Scott Moore, he was on the Barbarian Hour and my other podcast and it's just so hard for you guys. This stuff right now is super important for you guys to get those matches. And not yep. when you get into the, the, the January, February Mac schedule, it's like you're wrestling Mac guys. You're beating Mac guys. Bringing the bids happens now in December. That's when you're bringing the bids for your conference, right? Can I we do. agree on that statement? Yeah, we're, we're going to go to, you know, late January, we're going to, or mid, mid-January, we're going to go to Virginia Duels. We're going to see a bunch of really good teams there again. You might be able to work your way into a, a, a you know, a, a, a ranking if you haven't yet, but it's happening now. We go to Vegas and then we go to, you know, we, we got Vegas and we start duels. For the most part. I mean, yeah, because once you get into that max, the, the end of December is the beginning of the MAC duels and the beginning of the conference duels for Big Ten and all the other schools. They start doing their 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 Sunday, uh, their 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 Friday, Sunday right. duels. You guys do a similar yep. thing, I know. But um, here's a question I have. Um, 149 pounds, everybody's lost, right? Daka Mahalas got beat by uh, Austin Gomez. Gomez got beat by Iowa State guy. Uh, Panera Johnson, I want to say, uh, has his name. Uh, everybody's been beaten. Sasso's been beaten. Everybody's been yeah. beaten, but the App State guy has is undefeated. Will the ranking services rank him number one? And how huge is, for, is it for that guy to get ranked number one? And then if he runs the table and he runs the Southern Conference table, he's the number yeah. one guy at the NCAA tournament. Will they do it or are they afraid to do that? I think that, well, first of all, he, he took what place last year? Fourth or fifth? He fourth? was... Fifth last year. Yeah, he was fifth. fifth. So, you know, if he's undefeated, you know, you got to see a Stanford guy. I would assume that he, that Appy State's probably going to either um, Midlands or they're probably going to go to the Southern Scuffle or yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Gonna go to one yeah, they'll three. go to one of those, I believe. Yeah. If he goes to one of those tournaments and he, and you know, they, they he runs that and then he goes undefeated, I think you have to. If people keep losing. I don't know if it'll happen, but, you know, it isn't like this kid has is, is come out of nowhere and is, is winning an easy schedule. He, placed in top four last year and he comes back and he's wrestling a hard schedule. He's going to a major tournament and winning that. I don't know what else you can do besides put him on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was sixth last year, eighth year before. So he's a two-time okay. All-American. You know what I yep. mean? So 
So the guys right there, oh, but yeah. like, you know, I think that a lot of those ranking services have a hard time to the point of what I was talking to Scott Moore about, talking to you about your mid majors, your mid majors. It's like Campbell does an amazing job at promoting their program, but it's a mid major. Yeah. And I think that nobody promotes the program as good as for what a mid major does. Nobody does a better promotion than, than what Campbell does. That's my opinion. Obviously Ohio state's incredible, right? But they got a whole media army staff. People. They got a mass, they got an army of people. There you go. That's a great way of saying it. Um, you know, army works real hard at it, but once again, that's army West point and they've, they've got probably a little better, better budget than someone like Campbell, but Campbell works really hard at it, but you guys are battling. We're mid major. How do you guys uh, defeat that stigma? And how was Dustin Kilgore able to like constantly put himself in a position to, to be a top seed or be in the top four? How were you well, able to do that with them? I think you have to kind of back up a little bit. The hard part for the, the like the mid majors for us is that it, let's say, let's say we get a guy like uh, Jake Ferry right now. And this happened to him last year a lot. So Jake Ferry beat a bunch of guys, you know, he wrestled really well at the Navy, wrestled really well at Appy State last year, wrestled, went to Vegas. He placed, I want to say a sixth at Vegas. You would think a, a kid that places sixth at Vegas would be somewhere in the top 30. I think they squeezed him in somewhere around 26, 25. You know, then you see big 10 guys in there that are in the same ranking. So if a big, you know, also we get into our, our schedule portion of it and you, you see it happen all the time. A big 10 guy gets beat by another big 10 guy and the guy, the big 10 guy that lost barely moves, but they'll squeeze the other guy in. Does that make yes. sense? So yeah. If they, the, it's easy for a big 10 guy to make big gains. Yes. Because the, the, the theory is, and the thought in the mind is they're in the big 10. It's a tougher schedule. The yeah. SoCon guy and the Mac guy and whoever else, uh, you know, uh, EIW, I don't know how you can make the argument. They wrestle pretty tough schedule, ACC, yep. pretty tough schedule. But like, I, I understand where you guys are just kind of sitting in this area where like you're penalized more. You're it's an indictment that you are in those two conferences. So therefore we're going to drop you easily. We're going like, to put big time guys ahead of you because they got a tougher schedule. Jake Ferry wrestles the kid from Cleveland State last year, the tall, lanky kid that he's, he has struggled with forever. He's ranked 20, 20, I think 23rd or 22nd in the country. He loses to him, and he goes from 22nd to, like, 33 or 32 because he loses a MAC match. You know, it, it's more of a, a, a – he wasn't feeling the best, a style. It's almost like, hey, do I not wrestle him because he's not feeling the best because you take him out of the rankings. But then you're also – you know, you, you, want, you want your team to have the best opportunity to win. So there's a lot of things that go into it. But the MAC conference – we have guys that are pretty good that beat a ranked guy. And then they just, they drop someone out. We're in the big Ten or even some of the other conferences, you see guys get upset and instead of them falling far, they just add, they, they bring the guy who beat him in there and put him in the rankings. And that's what kills us the most. And I don't know if there's anything we can really ever do about that. You know, it's just, it's part of it. If you want to get ranked, you got to win every match at this level. And you, you got to be consistent where in the big 10, maybe they figure, all right, you don't have to be as consistent because those guys are good and every guy is good. So I understand it. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, at the end of the day, say that that it's unfair because if you look at the conference and how we did at the national tournament last year, we didn't do very well. You know, we were complaining a lot about not getting bids. At the end of the end of the day, our conference wasn't that good last year. I think we're much better as a conference this year than when we were last year. I also think, you know, you mentioned this in a text you sent me. Last year was a, a crazy year because you had you have the COVID year, and even this year it's still going to happen a little bit where you have all these guys coming back for their sixth year. Last year year it was crazy how many returning guys were back so yes. you know there's they didn't change the, the qualifying and then have more qualifiers so you're trying to jam all these guys in in the in the littler schools which if you look how we did at the national tournament we didn't deserve to to send more and we keep saying we need more we need more we have to do better at the national tournament we have to get better recruits we have to train our guys better we have to go to the tournaments like enrique has done the last three weeks and beat guys that beat guys from maryland beat guys from purdue he beat a guy from purdue the first week he just beat a guy from Nebraska. Um, he beat the guy from Ohio this past weekend that took third in our conference and went to the national tournament. Enrique's got to continue to beat those guys. I think he's put himself in a pretty good position because he's already beaten about five ranked guys. I think he'll be fine moving forward. But a guy like Cody Kamara, he beat one, lost one, beat one. He's just got to keep, you know, he's got to go to Vegas and do well there to, to give him a, a, a chance that all right, I'm going to be a qualifier regardless of how I do at our conference tournament. He's got to do a little better. I think Jake is really close. If Jake Ferry can go to the conference, I mean, go to the Vegas in two weeks and have a really good tournament, he has beaten enough guys now that say, all right, you know, he can have a bad match. He doesn't win the conference to go to the national tournament. That's what you try to do. And as far as how do you get, how do you get like Dustin Kilgore? And Dustin, Dustin could have did that, did what he did anywhere. I hate to say it. 
he wanted to come to Kent. He, there were some reasons why he wanted to come to Kent. And as a recruiting, I knew that he needed a full ride. I knew he wanted a red shirt. I knew his sister was at Kent. Her, her boyfriend was his best friend. So I knew all these things when I met him on July 1st, I said, listen, you got a full ride. If you want a red shirt, you can red shirt. You're going to, you know, everything you want is here for you. You don't need to go to those other schools. And Dustin's a simpleton. He just bought right into it. He's like, yeah, I want to be here. This is what I'm going to do. And he did it. So that made it, your nephew was a very, very same situation. You know, he, because of the connection we had, there were some things that we already knew about him. They already knew about us. It made it really easy for him. Enrique had a connection with Danny. Um, Mr. Mr. Manguia knows the area. He likes our program. He was in contact with us before we could even get in contact with him. And, and you know, he, he, knew, he knew that his daughter was at Kent. He knew that Kent was a good school for a son to go to academically. So we, there's some things, the good kids that we have, there's a reason why we got those kids usually. So, you know, obviously you guys have, uh, have done a really good job in the conference. Uh, I was looking at the conference rankings and something kind of threw me off with the conference rankings. I was talking to Scott Moore about it last week on the Barbarian Hour. And uh, they're the number one team. They're the defending champs, Lock Haven. Uh, he's the coach, the reigning coach of the year. Noto, their 25 ponder. He was U23 champ, Mac champ, Mac freshman of the year. That guy's really good. Knocked off Hildebrand of Penn State, first round at the NCAAs. So they got guys, right? Yep. The thing that was unsettling to me was I believe Central Michigan is ranked 12th out of 13. I don't buy Central Michigan being in the bottom half of your conference at any point in time ever. That guy's such a good coach and Coach Borelli. What do you think about that when you see that? I get their just rankings, but were you like, oh, wow. When that came out, were you like, I can't believe Central's ranked and near the bottom? Was that shocking to you? Well, it, it, was it shocking? It wasn't shocking if you know how if you know how our rankings are done. So if you know how they are done, like all right, that makes sense. You know, it isn't they aren't right, but they make sense. You can a perfect example was Enrique. Enrique, I want to say out of the fourteen teams was ranked like eighth or something. And I just looked at it. I go, man, I don't know how you put Enrique eighth, but at this point, he hasn't beaten anybody. Jake Ferry was third. He had beaten the guy from Clarion in front of him, but because at the MAC tournament he didn't get to wrestle him because we didn't. There was no true second at that weight class. He didn't get to wrestle them, so they just took last year's results and Got pushed it. them forward. Um, Central Michigan has a few guys moving up up weight classes. They, they, for example, their fifty seven and their forty nine swapped. So the forty nine is going fifty seven, the fifty seven is going forty nine. So since they both then placed at those, they both got dropped down. Got they're, it. Okay. They're both pretty. They're, they're really forty nine. Love it is their their fifty seven that dropped down to forty nine. Love it's going to be a load at forty nine. He's yes. going to be massive. He's really good. He wrestles in all the positions. He's a threat to win the conference. So they didn't even rank that guy. So now it yeah. makes sense to me because I was like, these guys aren't going to be 12. In the 65-pounder, 60, he if you remember last year, he didn't place in our conference. And ultimately, that's why Central didn't win the conference last year. He, he was ranked, I want to say, in the top 12 or 10 maybe. He wow. had a bad tournament. So he didn't place. And all of a sudden, 65 comes out. I don't even know where they have him ranked, but he isn't He isn't the top guy because I want to say the Lockhaven guy won it. So – He's up there. So it just, it comes off of last year's results. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Cause yeah. that was just like, to me, they're, they're really good. They're really good. They're so well coached. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, You did. I, I want to bring this up. We'll come back to, to, to Navy. I want to talk about the whole tournament a little bit and give kind of individual results starting at 25 all the way down to heavyweight. But I saw that you outpaced the Bobcats by like a point and a half. <laughs> They had some guys out. It's an open tournament. We did. We out we outpaced them, but it's an open. I mean, it's it's an invitational. You got sixteen guys. That, you know, you, there's a different number of people. They didn't have some starters. We didn't have some starters. I don't think Lock Haven's. You know, Lock Haven was one point ahead of us. So Lock Haven didn't have all their starters. So there's people missing. It's normal for a tournament this year. Um, you know, our, our here's an example. Our uh, our 57 pounder, which I think he's really good. You know, you watch him in the room. You watch him and Enrique wrestle in the room. I think he's really good. He hasn't wrestled yet for us. His first term will be Vegas. Hopefully he can be as good as he is in the room. We'll see. Jake Ferry took a, a you know, he didn't wrestle at, um, he didn't finish all the way at Navy. So he, he DQ'd out after the semis. He heard to tweak his knee a little bit. Is he's he okay? fine. He's, he's, okay. fine. he's fine. He didn't really practice today, but he's moving around fine. He'll be fine by three days from now. So he'll be fine for Vegas. But it was just one of those things, all right, you know, how bad do we want to, put him in a position to wrestle with pain this early in the year. And it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a six year guy. If it was a younger guy, I'm like, man, get your butt out there. You need to wrestle in some pain, but Jake wrestled. Jake has wrestled with pain before he knows how to do it. At this point, it was more of the safety of my athletes, especially being an older kid 
you know, he's a, he's a six year guy. He's been doing this a long time. And last thing I want to do is beat guys up at the Navy tournament where a guy like Enrique, he's young enough where he'll, but his body's recovering. Um, he's fine. If he gets a little banged up with our older guys, you really gotta, you gotta keep track of them. You gotta, you know, you always see those old guys that they're coming back. Oh man, he's a six year guy. He's going to be great. And it's just, the seasons are so long and it's so hard on him. And, and after multiple years of doing this mentally, it beats up physically. And I didn't want to do that to Jake. So we decided it was just best at that point to, to stop wrestling. Actually, it actually, he actually heard it in the first period against the lock havens backup. And the way it happened is he got taken down twice. He was, so he was down four one. He hurts his knee. Our trainer goes out. The lock haven guy takes down. He was up six to sixty one at the beginning of the second period. And Jake came back and beat him. I want to say twelve to twelve to ten um, with a bad knee. At that point, he walked off and and he goes, "Yeah, it bothered me." We'll see how. And you know, you sit down in the tournament, it swells back up. By the time his next match came up, it was you know it was swollen up already. And we're like, let's just you know, if you had to wrestle, you could, but you don't have to wrestle. It's not. And that was our decision. This is a young man sport. I don't think people no. get that. It's a literally an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old sport. Like, even if you look at like Yanni Yakamahalas, I think he's had a bunch of elbow surgeries. He's had some, an ACL, he tore his ACL in Cleveland. Yeah. That guy, they got to wrestle that guy differently because this is a grind. Gomez, he's, a, he's like a guy that's come back. I mean, Gomez's career was over. Do you realize that? Yeah. His career was over at Iowa State. He was done. It was over. It was a done deal. And he transferred to uh, Wisconsin and he kind of got like rejuvenated and he's into it. And now you look, that's a classic example though. Those two guys are like sixth, fifth, sixth year guys. It's it's hard. And I remember, I, I remember being in my fifth year and I'm talking, I, I told the story the other day about when you called me in my classroom and I was like, tashed out. I was done. I was student teaching. You called me in Kent Roosevelt and I was like, Ben Rings got deployed to Iraq. Remember? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. And it was like wild. And I was like 220 pounds. And I was like, you were like, you got to make weight this week. And I'm sitting there like eating Campbell's soup that they had at the, uh, they had this like sweet soup every day. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're kidding. Right. And I was like, you're like, no, you got to make weight. So yeah. I had to cut, you know, 23 pounds in, you know, four days. Which is not bad when you're a 220 pound guy. It's bad when you're someone Jake Ferry size. Yeah. But it's wild to think that these guys are doing it in sixth and seventh years. Mickey Philippi from uh, Pitt is a seventh yeah. year guy. Yeah. You know, he told me that uh, Michich was an eighth year guy last year, up two weight classes. Yeah. He placed at the Worlds this year, Jim, at 125 pounds. Yeah. He was at the NCAA tournament, the blood round at 141. You know what I mean? Like, just think about what those guys are doing to their bodies. It's well, like yeah, Yanni's, you know, if you remember how they, they dealt with Schneider after he won the, the Olympics, he, he barely wrestled. He wrestled about 12 oh, matches. No. Yeah. He, he did what they almost did with Gable Stevenson last year. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they, yeah. Yes. they should be doing that with Yanni. I think, I don't think Yanni should be wrestling. He, I don't think, I think Yanni's such a student of the game. You don't need to grind that guy. You need to no. take that guy to the Eastern EIWAs. I'll tell you what, if you get him as minimum matches, I don't even know if you have him wrestle the Eastern. You have him uh, weigh in, and, and they and they wild card him. Yeah. Or what is it? What is it? at large? What do they call it? Yep. No, I agree with you. It's a I, guy like I, that. Just me though. Like you're right. Like I send that guy to the Bearcat Open. I send that guy to the to the Franklin and Marshall Open. I send that guy to like where I know there's going to be four D one matches, and you max him out on. I mean, that's just me. I mean. Because you can't have that. And that guy's got, he's had some but, major injuries. But, you know, the the other side of that is you have a coach, a young coach who wants to win. And sometimes winning might be more important than sitting back and starting to Jan, But, Jan, you know, Yanni's a, he's a freak. So you're like, yeah, he'll be fine. What's, you know, what's one yeah, match? Yeah, yeah, The guy's he'll a freak, fine. yeah. But at the end of the day, he probably isn't 100% and he lost a match that he shouldn't. And and now you sit back and they lost the duel and he's probably going, man, I probably shouldn't even wrestle. I shouldn't, you know, I should give, I should give yeah. him a month off or because you know, he, the, Yanni probably wants to go to Vegas now, and that's coming. He's always gone to Vegas. Man, may, you know, maybe he needs a few weeks off because he wrestled all summer. He was wrestling yeah. the, the world championships in whatever it was, you know, September, yeah. October, whenever it was. Yeah, it's, it's it's when you're doing it year round, it's a grind. It's a it's a complete grind. Dustin Kil Kilgore, when he redshirted for us, our Olympic redshirted, he went away, and they trained differently. And then when he came back. It was just everything was a little bit different for him. It's like he didn't want to train the way he used to for us, and we didn't have a problem with it. It was just everything's a little different once you start doing things the international way, and, and you try to go to the freestyle route, and 
You try to get your bodies ready for freestyle. Freestyle and collegiate are different. It's still wrestling, but they're different. You got to train differently. One's more explosive than the other. Matches are longer in collegiate yeah. than they are freestyle. It's just different. Yeah, because there's no there's no bottom wrestling yep. in freestyle as far as a dude had a lot of you, Matt returning you, beating you up. And that uh-huh. I think that stuff right there is the big difference that sets it apart. That's yeah. what sets it apart. Um, even if you look at how the guys like have evolved in MMA and like there's a Cuban guy, Yoel Romero. He's not as dominant on the mat as the American guys are because he never did a collegiate season. Yes. A lot of those guys, they're, and if they have to expand into another type of grappling, whether it's Sambo or judo or whatever else they're doing, they got to, or, or grappling or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's, it's like what you guys do with the riding time and what it does to guys and training them to put them in positions. And that even the MMA's evolved, they're still able to control people. They're still yeah, like okay. able to like assert their will on people. Like, what like uh, Mark Coleman used to do and then uh, random in, and those guys were able to get on top of people and the, the ground and pound and hold them down and kind of just punch them in the ribs, kind of catch a shot in the, but it's like, it's such a dominating grinding season. The other thing is you guys, well, why those guys dominate in MMA gym is uh, the amount of weigh-ins you guys do. Yeah. Like, the amount of weigh-ins are like insane. Like you yeah. guys do more weigh-ins in the season. If a guy wrestles the full schedule, they'll do anywhere from 18 to 22 weigh-ins. Yeah, if they do your full weigh, because there's three weigh-ins at the end of the year. You know, there's five in the last two weeks yeah. with the conference and the uh, the NCAs yeah. is a three, right? It's a yeah. oh yeah, the scratch plus one plus two, right? Yep. So it's like that's nothing to those guys. That's yeah. and they're they're wrestling and if it's a tournament, it's two hours. If it's a duel, it's one hour. No. So it's like that's nothing to those guys. What you guys do is short of nothing short of what it's superhuman and Herculean what these guys do in a D1 schedule and to do it for eight years, like yeah. Stevan Michich and to do it for seven years, like Mickey Philippi. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm just going to put it out there. Like I I'll, I'll text Nemeth and uh, Mark Lensman. And they're like, I, I was done at the end of five years. I can't imagine yeah. going six, seven, eight. Yeah. My That's why you be careful with done. Jake and Cody. You got to really be careful what you're doing with them. You really do. Okay. More Navy classic talk. 133, who did you enter and how did you place? Um, we had uh, blah, 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 blah. Fenton. Fenton, yeah, Brandon Fenton. Um, he ended up losing to the number one C, the guy who won the tournament this first match, came back, won three matches, lost, and then lost, and then come back and taking a seventh. So he also, there's no, once you lose, you can never take third. You can only, yeah. the best you can do is fifth. Only Whatever the semifinalists can take third and fourth. Yep, yep. So he ended up taking, uh, um, taking a, a seventh because he lost twice. Um, Lewis Noel at 141, lost to the number one seed once again um, in his second match. He won a match, lost. Then he came back and won four matches and took a, a fourth, a fifth. So the best he could do is fifth after his one loss. Oh, because fifth fifth is third, essentially, in the backside yes. there yep. when you so lose early. So, you know, so he, he, he did what he did. He lost to the best guy in the tournament, which is normal. Um, Cody Kamara, so he ended up making the semis. He got to wrestle the guy from OU again, um, Hagen. Beat him last week. Went into overtime this this week, lost in overtime. From there, he dropped down, took a third, beat the um, beat the kid. Well, who did he beat for third and fourth? Beat a pretty good kid for third and fourth um, to take a third. So he did. So now the duel, the duel is going to be the big thing between him and Hagen. Yeah, the duel is going to decide who's going to probably get seated higher at the MAC tournament. Unless they both see each other at uh, at uh, Vegas, which we could see them there at the tournament. Okay, gotcha. But, I know you love seeing them. I know you and the Bobcats get after it. Listen, (laughs) I'm kind of like starting to build the grudge match thing here because I think they got a new trophy made and uh, he took it upon himself. And my thing is, if you guys win that trophy, I don't know if if I'm Joel. I'm saying, hey, I think we're going to let it hang out here another year. I don't know. I don't know. That's Listen, just me talking. Big they game. can do whatever they want with the trophy. I could care less. All I want to do is win the duel. They can have their trophies. <laughs> they can have your your label, whatever it is. Anyways, to go to move forward. Um, Co- so Cody and him taken came back and took a third. Wrestled really well. Um, you know, it, it, the kid from OU Hagen, he's never beaten him until last week when he beat him at uh, Appy State. And this this week, I thought he out wrestled him. He ended up getting in a few shots. Hagen never got into any one of his shots. Everything that Hagen did was off of Cody. Um, so Cody was in on a really good shot. Hagen dove under, scored in overtime. Um, I thought, I thought at the end of the day, you could look at some things there. We can fix this and we, you know, we'll get him next time. That's kind of how you look at it. Sometimes when kids lose, you're like, man, how do you, how do you fix that? You don't, 
all right, hopefully maybe you try to slow the match down. With with him, you just go out and wrestle the same way, and you just got to do a little better job of finishing some things. So he wrestled well. And you got to um, be careful with him again. He's an older guy, too. Same thing, older guy, too. Um, 57, we don't have our guy yet. We didn't have anyone there, um, so we didn't wrestle. 65 is Enrique. Like I said, Enrique won uh, five matches or four matches today. Yesterday, wrestled great. Um, he's hard to handle. He's mean. He wants to win. All the things that you can't teach – he does about as he's as good as anyone I've ever met. And I compare him to Dustin when it's the things that you can't, like I can't teach certain things. I'm not going to teach you to want to go out and, and just, I don't want to say hurt him because he doesn't want to hurt him, but he wants to make people like he wants, he want, he wants you not to want to wanna wrestle him again. I think if you talk to your nephew about how the one sixty five pounder from Happy state feels that kid, he broke that kid. I don't know how old that kid is. I know he's like the 15th ranked guy in the country. There was a point in the match when, Enrique did something so odd and different. And the guy just literally just kind of like turned and fell on his head at the mat. And he didn't want to get up. And Enrique notices that he feels that. And that's how Enrique won a lot of matches. He beat the OU guy and uh, for third and four, I mean, for first and second, um, it was a three nothing score, but really he handled the match. He was never in danger. It was one of those three, 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 zero matches that you think, well, it's a close match when it really wasn't that close at all. In my opinion. Um, once again, they'll get to see each other again. You know, I said once, maybe two more times, you know, moving forward. Um, 174 was Michael, uh, Michael Fier, 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 F-E-E-R-E, um, wrestled for us last year. He went, I want to say, three and two, wrestled better. He's kind of going through a little bit of funk since last year's MAC tournament. It's kind of a little different, trying to get him out of it. Um, a lot of it's just mental. And he, in the room, he does some really nice things. He just gets down on himself sometimes. And when you get down on yourself in this sport, it's really hard to get up. And, uh, he uh, he's a guy that we're you know we're just trying to we're trying to get him going. I think that if you look at how he wrestled last year at the beginning of the year, it was way better than the end. So hopefully we're just going to kind of flip that this year. Um, he took Prine into overtime last year at the beginning of the year. Um, you know last week they wrestled he wrestled Prine, and it was a one takedown match. Prine got it at the very end of the match. So maybe we're at the point where Michael's like, all right, you know I'm close. I'll get these guys later on in the year, and that's what we're hoping. Um, as far as uh, 184, we wrestled Bates. Bates has a bad knee. He heard it at Appy State. We weren't going to wrestle him. We kind of said, hey, listen, you need to get out and wrestle and, and try to get through this. He did. He did all right. He ended up placing seventh, I believe. Um, he had an all right tournament. Uh, just needs to, needs to learn how to wrestle through some injuries, and that's kind of why we made him wrestle. Um, 197, we got a freshman. His, um, his name is Blake Schaefer, and he's just learning. He's, he's his, you know, he ended up he ended up taking seventh as well. As well. And he's just a guy that, you know, we kind of threw him out there and we thought that Bates was going to go 80, 97. Instead, Bates decided to go 84. So that kind of opened up a spot that we weren't really expecting this year. So in turn, we got a freshman in there and he's learning. Um, I think our goal with him is just to learn as much as he can. Next year, he's going to redshirt and hopefully we can turn him into a heavyweight. And then he's we're going to bring in six, five, six, six. He's six, five. He was up to about 217 pounds before we started cutting weight to make 97. Now he's down cutting and making it really easy. He just is really, he's just really green. He like, he just, it's like he wrestles really hard. He just doesn't know a lot of the situations, especially at this level. And he's so long and he hasn't, he hasn't figured out his body yet. So we're going to try to get him as strong as he possibly can after this year. But he's our guy we're going with as of right now, unless something changes in, you know, from here to the next four or five weeks, we think he's going to be our guy and he's going to learn. And, you know, like I said, we're kind of throwing him in there with the, we're throwing him in there, but this is, this is how kids learn. You know, you, there's nothing better than being thrown in to learn and traveling and doing all the things you do to get better. So, He'll be there getting better on the job. Okay. When you say something, when you say about Bates, you got to learn how to wrestle injured. I don't think the guy's got like a torn ACL or his knee's not destroyed. He's got like a nagging injury or like bursitis or something, right? Like he doesn't have a torn ligament or anything in his no. knees. No, you're just well, saying he's got like a nagging, he's got something that's nagging him. It hurts. It's not like you're sending the guy out there with no ACLs or something, right? No, oh, no. It's, it's just a nagging. Okay, hold on. When you say that though, what do you think people hear? Oh, he's sending his guys out injured. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he's got a nagging knee injury. He doesn't like to wrestle down with a bad knee. So essentially, he lost in the semifinal. The the to go for third and fourth, he lost because he didn't take down. He literally wrestled the Lock Haven guy, who I want to say placed pretty high last year at the, and they went to overtime. But my guy had the the only takedown in the match. He didn't want to go down, so he took neutral, went to overtime, got in a scramble, lost. But you know, at the end of the day, I, I you know I said I go. Bates, we're trying to get you to learn how to wrestle, being a little bit, you know, banged up. Instead, you go neutral. I go, take down. What's the worst? I go, worst things you're going to lose. I go, we end up losing anyways, but you're not learning what we're trying to get you to do. So a lot of it's, you know, you know, you're trying to figure out how to do things. I tell my guys all the time, I go, 
every day that you go, you, that you move forward, you're probably not going to feel any better than in March. You're going to, you know, if you're not hundred percent now, you're never going to be hundred percent. The way the seasons are, the way the college so years. So, so you got to learn to wrestle being 85% or 70% or if it's 88% or if you got a bad injury at the end of the year, you want to give it a go. You got to learn to wrestle 66% for, for example. Yeah, yeah no, so that's a great part point. of our sport. Yes. A hundred percent. I agree with that. So like, but you got to understand the optics of what people hear is, oh, this guy sends his guys out injured. Well, the reality is everybody's banged up. Like everybody's just, banged you're, up. to your point, what you just made, yeah. everybody is, their percentage is not at a hundred. Very, yeah. very, very few guys. Like look at the year Spencer Lee won. They sacrificed an NCAA team title for him to make the Olympic team, which I don't know if he's going to beat Gilman, whatever. But the point is he was so beat up. Yep. And he limped through that NCAA tournament and then it affected him last year because yep. he couldn't wrestle last year because he was so banged up from the year before. Yep. hundred percent. So his, his, happens. his are a little different injuries though. He had some, some torn ACLs that, that needed to be repaired. Well, yeah, that guy. Okay. So that guy, that guy was out there with two, two torn ACLs. That guy's a mutant. That guy's out beating people up and, People are wondering, oh man, he only won four to two, and I'm like, yeah, you have two, you you not normally when you don't have ACLs, you can't do much of anything. You ride you know, that kind of someone, you, you, yeah, you ride him out, and you, and you four, yeah. four two, yeah, four two is you know four two. He never was in danger of losing the match, never, and never. Like, he like two. dominates, and everybody yeah. like sits there and dogs the guy, but yep. he essentially traded his Olymp his shot at the Olympics in yep. Tokyo for their team title. That's the way I look at it. At least people yep. can call me whatever they want to. But I, I think that's a lot of what that was. Cause he was, I don't even know if you would send an athlete out like that, Jim. Most like kids, have to most let kids them, wouldn't be able to, you'd have to yeah, let them make that own decision. And if they could, you'd be like, eh, I guess give her I'm a go. Sure he, I'm sure he made that decision, but at the no, end of he the did, I know he did. Cause then his coaches wanted him to talk about it. Cause they weren't going to talk about it. Then he ended up talking about it, but heavyweight, tell us how 285 performed for you at Navy. Jacob Cover. He, uh, I don't believe he didn't place wrestled hard. He's a, he's a, He's a guy that we're getting the most out of. Um, you know, he, I'm not sure he ever really, played. he might've placed once in the state tournament at heavyweight. He's just a guy that comes and works. He's one of our team leaders. He's a captain, does everything right. Um, he's a small heavyweight and I'm pushed away. I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's on my team. I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's a member of Kent state wrestling. Great kid to have. Um, and he works hard every day, works hard in every match. He just doesn't always win that often. So, but he, he's, he's a great kid to have for all the other reasons. There's not a day in practice. When I'm looking and and covers are doing what he's supposed to be, so you know those kids those kids are great for your program. I don't know if a lot of people get what you just said because most people are just so uh, fixated on winning, right? Yeah. And we had him on the show, and he's already got a degree in um, math education, and he's coming back to you know to, to give it his last go. An undergrad, he's a Columbus kid. And it's like, I think that that's, we're trying to make productive people. I thought, right. Like I thought that's my, that's my job Prepare yes. them for life after life after ath athletics. Do you feel like, uh, you know, like I had Scott Moore on, um, do you feel like the big 10 and then you guys are at a different, it's not a level playing field. Do you guys feel like it's almost like a different sport for them compared to how it is for you guys? Like, it's just such a different experience. Like, Cover even talked about it because there's families, Buckeye fans, right? Yeah. And yeah. like we said, they got a whole army of people promoting Ohio State wrestling. They got a whole army of an even bigger army promoting Ohio State football and basketball. And yeah. this week's the biggest rivalry in sports sports yeah. period, you know, Ohio State, Michigan. Do you yeah. think it's just like such a different experience between Mac and Big Ten that's like apples so, to watermelons like I, how can i even explain that to people so when i started i thought it was all pretty even if you were following the rules it was all pretty even you had nine point scholarships you gave them out and you could go out and get them and it was even years ago you know there was no such thing as as, as food like uh, um athletic dorms there was no such thing as athletic cafeterias things started changing they started changing the rules where you could set up an athletic cafeteria which means kids eat for free so now all of a sudden you don't need to give a kid if a kid's worth the full ride, you say, all right, we're going to give you 66%. We're not going to give you the food. You can eat the cafeteria for free every day. It doesn't cost us a dime. It doesn't cost you a dime. So right after that, they got that advantage. Then they have cost of attendance, which they can give out. Cost of attendance is, is if, if it costs 50,000 hours to go to school, what's it cost to live in that city? Kent State, you can get an extra 4,000 hours. We don't have cost of attendance in wrestling, but our football and basketball programs do. 
at schools like, I think I want to say Ohio University has cost of attendance in wrestling. It's just added money that they can go out and recruit with. So that takes you above the 9.9. Ohio State 100% has cost of attendance. Now they can go out and get other guys. Now there's this other thing that they're giving out. It's, it's you're up to, you're allowed to go up to $6,000. You're paying athletes $6,000 to, to be an athlete. And it can be any athlete. We're doing it in football and basketball. We aren't doing it in wrestling. I know that they're doing it in, at other big programs, the Big Ten, the ACC, things like that. So it's to the point where there's all this money and kids can go to Ohio State for a half a scholarship and everything's taken care of because there's all this other money out there where if a kid wants to come to Kent State for a half a scholarship, he's going to get a half a scholarship, the other half he's going to have to pay. So they, they've widened the gap where it wasn't like that 10 years ago. So like a Dustin Kilgore, Dustin Kilgore needed a full scholarship to go to school because that's he wasn't going anywhere less. So when you had all these Big Ten programs going, knocking on his door and saying, listen, we don't get more than 80%. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm going to school. I can get a full ride. It, you know, he just started checking people off his list, schools off his list because he wanted a full ride. I knew that. We gave it to him. The funny thing is on the back end, we only gave him like 71% because he was a financial aid kid. And the financial aid, the, the Pell Grant took care of that 29% where the Big Ten school programs didn't know that because they didn't know his financial situation. We figured that out. So you got to be pretty creative on how you do it. But there's definitely a gap nowadays between the big time sports and and, and us. Um, you know, it, it it's then the NIL, the name image uh, likeness yeah. is a whole nother, like it's can get monkey now. wrench. Yep. You can go out and, you know, there's some schools in the Mac that are offering NLIs to kids. So what they're doing is they're finding donors that want to give a hundred thousand dollars to a program. And then you can turn around and say, all right, I'm going to give you a scholar, a full scholarship, and I'm going to give you some NLI money. And you're going to go out and do some, um, public, public service 10 times a year. And we're going to pay you the NLI money. You're allowed to do that now. We don't have any of that NLI money. We don't have a um, cost of attendance. We don't have any of the extra paying money. We're we're dealing with 9.9 scholarships, and that's what we're working with. But we so do have could, some ability. So, with- so I could just start, like, doling out stuff and be like, hey, do a social media post. Promote the dual meet coming up. Promote. You could do a commercial. You could have yeah. a commercial, and you can pay that guy $10,000 because you're a Kent State alumni if you want. And, and you're allowed to do that, and I'm allowed sending my guy to you to do that. So 100%. That's so, amazing. You know, you, you get you get schools that you get guys, you get people that want to give that, that want Ohio State to win. So now they, they just line up and they wait and they say, All right, what do we need to get that guy? Let's offer him an NLI. And you know, that's what they're doing at Penn State, that's what they're doing at Iowa, that's what doing all these programs. We don't N-I- have that NIL. Community. We keep saying the wrong t- it's name, N-I- image, likeness is NIL. NLI yeah. is national letter. Yeah. NIL is name, image, likeness. Name image likeness is a game changer, I think. But what it does is it kind of chokes you guys off. It chokes some of the other programs off. In my opinion, that's just me. But and I guess yeah. when you guys, when they those guys can do that, I mean, they're playing within the bounds of the rules. What can, I mean, what are we going to yep. sit here and say bad things about them? Oh, they're they're playing by the rules, right? Yep. If they have they have more money. It's like you know, it's like your neighbor that uh, makes three times as much and he has a boat and he goes on vacation for a month a year and you're working every day. It's just it's it's life. It is what oh, it, it is, is, and you just. Doesn't mean you stop. It doesn't mean you quit. Doesn't mean you make excuses. You just got to keep on grinding and, and try and do the best you can. And that's where I think like the guys like the Cover, the Covers get lost in this. The Covers get yeah. The Jacob Covers who are they're do they're what it's about. That guy's what it's about. That guy's about like getting a degree, getting multiple degrees, you know, uh, advancing himself in life forward through education, through athletics that kept him there. Jim, I never would have gone to college had it not been for for wrestling. Yeah, I would have I would have been like a below average iron worker or something. And my dad would have screamed at me every day and I'd have been an even worse black sheep in the family, but that's how it yeah. goes. But like, that's what wrestling did for me is the vehicle for finishing school. It was like the thing that kept me around. And then we got to hang out with all these great people. I had great teammates, great coaches, yeah. and then, you know, friends. And then uh, obviously I met my wife at Kent state. And it's just like an amazing thing to think about for me that that experience is completely not what it once was. And um, I don't know that changes. Life changes. Life changes. It's the college experience is so much different with, with these things right here. (laughs) Oh, oh, that thing right there. I don't think kids understand that this thing is so powerful. Yeah. The, the smartphone itself is just such a powerful thing. And it's a double edged sword. 
And I just don't think people really think before they're sending things and doing things. But you got someone like me, like you understand, I've posted on the internet hundreds of thousands of times, right? Like yes. if you look phone. at <laughs> tweets, if you look at YouTube videos, 12, over 12,000 YouTube videos, uh, tweets probably sitting at like some inordinate amount of tweets. But like every time you send that out, it could be the last thing that you do because when you're in certain jobs, they're looking at your Twitter. And I'm in education, I'm in public education. You just, you know, there's like things you can't put out there. And yeah, you don't need a constant stream of consciousness to a bunch of strangers, I don't think. That's just my opinion. I mean, but there's people who just, they do it. Yeah, I've got over, I think something like 100,000 tweets or something crazy, but it's a lot of results or, you know, the Browns are terrible today or whatever, you know, whatever it is, is what happens. Hey, your, your, your road trip to Maryland sounded like the, the Buffalo Bills getting to Detroit. It, it, well, ours wasn't bad. The, the one to Happy State, that was a bad one. Navy was easy to get to. Happy State was a bad one. You caught the so, hurricane on the way down to App State. Yeah, we were going to App State. The hurricane that came up and hit Florida and came up, we caught the literally the the, the wind, the the rain, the sideways wind up the mountains, the fog that came with it. It was it was pretty bad. So yeah, I mean, it sounds like what it took for the Buffalo Bills to get to Detroit, Michigan. Yes. yes. Did you see but, some hey, of that? I didn't see any of the video. I, I, I traveled all day yesterday. Today, I've been working at practice today because it's a short week because of Thanksgiving. So we got our guys in there today to get some of the bumps and bruises out to work them out. But it's Thanksgiving. So we're, too, we're too, everything's that's why, you know, we're doing this right now. Hopefully to get it out before Thanksgiving. Um, oh, but no, next it's going to be out tonight. It's going to be out. So people I'll will be, have it for tomorrow. We send it to our, we send the email out through the university. It has to go through it. And anytime we send an email, it has to be like double proof by like nine people. Gotcha. So they watch us. But next, Literally uh, like next to Monday, what we're just talking about to our point that people just put things out and they don't think about it, but things have to be vetted. They have to be yes. looked at. They have to be proofread. They have to be, cause it's the image of the university that's online on the, on the, on the, it's, it's, it's out there, right? It's, it's on the line, right? To send it out. Yeah. It's one thing for you to send it out to me. It's another thing for me to send it out through the university without them checking it. So yes. So Jim, you, do, you, do, you do a good job of keeping it straight for us though. No, I, I try to, uh, so I guess the last thing is the crowdfunding. Where are we yeah, at? Two things that? I want to talk about. Two things. Ne the 28th, next Monday, okay. we are going to do a telethon. So all you can see, okay. watch this. We're going to be calling up. So our, our strategy is, if you look, last year we made about $70,000 in our crowdfunding campaign. If you look, everyone's really worried about us and we're only at like $2,000. Or so right at the bat, we already got a guy that's uh, that's that's matching $25,000. So we got $25,000 that's sitting there. It's going to be matched. Our main goal, though, is on Sunday. We're going to call people on Monday the 28th, and our goal is for either them to pick up their phone and to donate that evening or to wait until midnight because then everything gets doubled, plus there's some matching, and plus there's a, there's some bonuses you can get. So if they want to wait until midnight, on, so it'll be Tuesday morning, or if they want to wake up or first thing Tuesday morning, they can do it, or if they want to give, give us all the information, we write it down, we then – Put it in at midnight for you, and then we throw it away. Like I said, our, our goal is to raise hundred thousand dollars. So right now, I we're at like three or four thousand dollars, which is nowhere close to where we were at last year. But last year, we got all our information out too soon. So, like for example, if someone like you, Zeb, if you turn around, you always give to this. If you were to do it right now, it's twenty five dollars. Let's say you give fifty bucks, you put it in in that account, it's fifty bucks. That's it. If you wait until next Tuesday morning, Monday night at midnight, whatever it is. That 25 bucks, or let's say that 25 bucks will turn it, it'll double. So it'll go to 50. And then for every 25 unique donations we get, a unique donation is a different credit card number. So myself, I give, I usually give two to three thousand dollars. I use three different cards all at midnight. So they're all doubled. And then those are three unique because there's three different credit cards. So those are three unique donations. When you get the 25 donations, the university gives you a five hundred dollar boost, it's called. So Got we it. usually dominate with the boost and the 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 doubling. Plus, at the end of it, as long as we make at least twenty five thousand hours, we got a guy that's going to throw in another twenty five thousand. So ultimately, it's our goal to raise up sixty thousand dollars, get some of that doubled, get some of boost, and then that twenty five come in to hopefully get us right around hundred thousand hours. It's a little different year. Last year we did, we, you know, we didn't. Last year was because we had two years of COVID that people really didn't do a whole lot. They were scared. We didn't know what was going on. Last year, we killed it. The whole university killed it. This year, things aren't going the same way. Everyone keeps asking what's going on with the wrestling. How come we haven't really raised any? Our goal and our mission 
is to get everybody. And like I said, if you're getting this, you're going to start getting text messages, hopefully either tonight or tomorrow, explaining what we're doing. It's it's going to go out to every person that's ever donated to Kent State Wrestling, every person that's ever sent anything to Kent State Wrestling. And, and like I said, our goal is to raise $100,000. That's our main campaign. Um, we, we won this award for the most amount of money the last five years with the crowdfunding. And we're hoping to do it again this year. Okay. So the fundraising fundraising uh, is the big thing. Obviously, that's we just had a yeah. whole conversation about what keep, keeps Kent State afloat. What sets us? What's different about Ohio State compared to us? We have to do a lot more fundraising than they do, um, because they're they're the Ohio State University. Um, they're going to have the biggest oh. football game uh, in history. It always is every year with Ohio State Michigan, and it always is, and that draws a lot of money, and that's what feeds all the other sports. And you guys don't have that, but you're doing a heck of a job uh, fundraising. You said you had one other thing for me, Jim. What was it? December twenty third. We're having Coach Gray Day. So if you are a person that's ever wrestled for Kent or was ever on a Kent State roster, we'd like you to come to the match. Um, if you I, at some point, we'll send out the link tomorrow, so you might get it. Um, we're going to honor Coach Gray. I think you know he's a little bit older at this point. He hasn't been to a lot of matches lately. We're going to get him there. His family's going to help us. He doesn't know about it. I don't believe he's checking YouTube right now at, at this point in his life, so he doesn't know anything about this stuff. Hopefully, you know, get there. We can get as many people on the seats. It's going to be a five o'clock match, December 23rd. It's a Friday. Hopefully you can sneak out of work. There's mat side seating as well. So you can buy a ticket to get your mat side. You'll get some appetizers, some beer. I can um, drink the beers again. I can drink, drink the, the beers. beers. I think we're going to try to everyone that's ever, ever on a roster will be able to stand up, shake Coach Gray's hand, and, and we'll announce you in what years you wrestled, even if it was not with Coach Gray, because you were there with Coach Gray, correct? For Never. I was you and Coach Romano. So you weren't there at all for Coach never, Gray? Never. I okay. missed Coach Gray. Okay, so you missed him. Joey D got Coach Gray, though. Joey D's two years older than me. Nick Magistrelli, they're 96 grads. They got Coach Gray. They got him for like a year maybe, right? When he was yeah, like they got him for like a year. I missed him by like a year then. Okay. So like I said, we're trying to get everyone there. We can't. We, we, you know, it's around the holidays, so people are worried about that. But in the same sense, we have so many local people that, that can get back to Kent really easy and and, you know, at the same sense, it's not Christmas. It's not Christmas Eve. It's the day before. Hopefully the weather holds up. And we can get as many people out there as possible. It's going to be a great. I'll, I'll it's talk, be great I, know that, I know a guy who's going to be in town that day. Our guy that? Nemeth. Chris, Nemeth will be in for Christmas Eve Eve. Is this big, uh, we do a big, uh, well, he does a big party uh, Christmas Eve Eve on the 23rd. He usually tries to get back from uh, his busy schedule. So maybe I can get it's a 5 o'clock match, so he won't miss. 5 o'clock match. Last yep. part. So well, who do you got? You, he's got also, you got the Burrow? You got Edinburgh. Yeah, he's okay. also uh, Nick Nemeth is also going to be hosting our uh our gala that we have at the end of the year, which is our biggest fundraising event for the athletic department. He's the main host for it. And it's it's a kind of a big deal to do it. Josh Cribbs has done it, Edelman's done it. Um, it's mainly been all football players. Uh Cribbs did it one year. Not Cribbs, the basketball player that uh Gates, Antonio that Gates. Gates did it. So that they're bringing back Nick Nemeth to do it, and I think he's going to be great at it because you get to get to hold a mic, you get to talk about. It's like it's like trying to keep a party going all night long, yeah. and it, you know it's with people that have money that want to donate. He's trying to get people to buy certain things that can, you know, that would normally sell for fifty. He's trying to get to it, have people buy it for two hundred bucks. So he's talking talking him into it over a mic. It'll be a really he'll, he'll be really good at it. We're really excited to have him. He finally gave us the okay to get us there. So and like I said, we're really glad he's able to do it because it just once again it, it lets us it lets people know that hey. Wrestling does does have some people out there that that have made it pretty big. Did you see? He did the thing. He did a uh, comedy. I didn't send it to you. Yeah, I sent it to you. I, did, yeah, did, I saw the comedy. Yep, yep. <laughs> did you hear the, the hear the time when Frank Romano caught him doing a WWE move? Oh, he, he used to go in the corner, and that's all him and uh, Sean Wentz did. They used to do. W, I used to watch him. Like, no, what the hell's going on back there? <laughs> and Coach Romano would kind of like just he'd see it and he'd just pretend like it wasn't happening. Nick was a you know Nick. He's a Three-time MAC champ should have been a four-time MAC champ, four-time national qualifier, and I think since day one he got there, you knew his goal was to get to the WWE. We were just he was not that he was using us, but we, he was using wrestling as an avenue to get himself as yeah. big a name as he could to get to the WWE, and it worked for him. So at the end of the day, but it wasn't like Nick Nick, Nick Nemeth came to us and said, "Yeah, uh, my goal is to be a national champ and uh, to be the Kent State greatest wrestler ever." He came to us and said, my goal is to be a WWE wrestler. I enjoy wrestling. I'm going to keep doing this because I think he can get my name out there. And his plan worked perfectly. Here, That was how many years ago? 
Is that 20 years ago? We graduated in 2003, so it's going on 20 years this year. That was 20 years ago. So he's been – his dream started. Yeah, and he's, he started right ago. away in 04. 04, he was down because he was like a, a assistant coach at uh, St. Edwards because they do such a good job with keeping, you know, bringing alumni back and yep. just getting really good, uh, you know, young guys to come in there and beat their other guys up, and that's how the high school guys get so good. So they brought him back, and he did that for a year. And then Coach Hada got him into that OVW, Ohio yeah. Valley. And then um, he did a bunch of different other things. And um, he was just like a, a, a company man who, who did what they told him to do. And and he did a really good job at it, and he's still doing it. And now he's into comedy and movies. So, yeah. And then I get free tickets for uh, – <laughs> I got free tickets this summer to Motley Crue, like front row. It was sick. Yeah, because he got he – got, they sent him over to the U.K., so I had to take my sister-in-law. So uh, my wife didn't want to go. <laughs> so we went to Brown Stadium. We're front row uh, for Poison, Joan Jett, Duff Leopard, and Motley Crue. And he gave me I'll the tickets. Down. Yeah, he gave me the tickets. He was like, yeah, I can't use the tickets. You got to use the tickets. I said, okay. Last year, he, last year he, did a, he, he really helped us out with our crowdfunding, too. Gave us a, a really, really good donation. Um, good. We haven't hit him up this year yet. I, I You know, we'll send him something. Last year, he kind of came out of nowhere and really stepped up. So – like I said, people like him are so valuable to our program. You know, 20, 20 years later, so valuable to our program and keeping us going. One of the things, too, is people might not know. So pre-COVID, our, the old AD cut our scholarship, cut our coaches, kind of, you know, in my opinion, I don't think he cared about wrestling. I don't think I don't think he liked wrestling. I don't think he, he gave a damn about how good we were, how bad we were. Um, if it was up to him, I believe he would have cut the program. Uh, you know, because I don't think he's with Kent State anymore. So they bring in uh, Randall Richmond, who's – done an amazing job so far. Um, and somewhere in that I negotiated with him that, you know, not, not the negotiation. I think that he believes that to have a, a comprehensive program, you have to have at least a scholarship. So he gave us the scholarships. He gave us our coaches back. So we did everything that, you know, he felt that, all right, I'm, I'm going to get you back to, to, to where you should be. What are you going to do for me? And I kind of said, Hey, we'll, 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 we pretty much fundraise our entire operating budget. So we spend about 120 to $150,000 a year operating we have to bring that in one way or another. And there's a lot of different ways we do that through some endowments that we have through just fundraising, through some going out and finding people that want to give big donations, but it's a big part of my job. Um, you know, I would think that it's a big part of everyone's job. If it isn't, you're not doing your job at this point. And you're in at any, any college, even Ohio state fundraises a lot. I would say they all do, but it's a huge part of my job. And, uh, a guy like Nick stepped up last year and did, did, you know, made it a little bit easier to accomplish our goals and, it's like I said, it's because of people like him. And we can't keep going back to Nick Nemeth. We got to find the next guy that's going to give us $5,000, yeah. the next guy that gives us 5000 But But um, he did a great job in helping us out last year. And like I said, we, we he, because of that, he's coming. We, we invited him to, to do our, our big gal at the end of the year. So we're excited about all this. You got to get up in the Concord, Kirtland Hills, Menor area. I drive by Nick Magistrelli's house. And I'm going to tell you what, Jim. <laughs> that guy, that guy's doing something right, whatever. I don't know if he's got a money tree in the backyard, but Nick Magistrelli. I'll tell you what, that guy, you know, uh, him and Joe Glavin, they're up there printing money, I think. <laughs> and, uh, so you got to talk to them guys. So listen, him and Glavin, you got to be like, hey, guys, or, you know, we're over here. You're our next whales we're going to get. What's going on here? Dub says you guys are living in the living in the lap of luxury here. What's Kent State Wrestling done for you? Come on. One of the things I really try to do, and this is you know, not that it takes a genius to figure this out, but. So you get kids to graduate, you help them get jobs, they get jobs, whatever it is, you know, whatever it may be, you start hitting them up for money. Hey, how about a donation? Hey, come to the golf outing, little donations. You get it in their mind. All of a sudden, they get married, they have kids. And at some point, as a father that raised, you know, at one point I had three kids and I, I married into two more, so I had five kids. It's like, man, I'm holding on to every dime I have because I'm trying to get my kids to where they need to be. And at some kids, you know, I'm at the point now, I got, I got one child that I'm pretty much financially responsible for at this point in my life. And all of a sudden, I got a little bit more money, a little bit more. So you're able to do things more with that. Someone like Nick Nemeth never got married, never doesn't have kids. He, you know, he's able to do a little bit more with his money. He's a genius. Nick, he's, he's a, a genius. genius. <laughs> he cracked the code. <laughs> yes. But like Nick, Nick's in that phase where his kids are like, they're all over the place. They're wrestling. Okay, he's got I just really, yeah, he's got a they're freshman. All over. I just really yeah. has a freshman in high school. Yeah. So we got to get, you know, we got to get Nick in about nine to 10 years when his kids are off. And all that money that he's that he's pulling, his kids aren't taking. And then he's then you start begging him, not begging. Him, then you start getting him to donate. And at that point, you know, most likely he's making a little bit more money with his job. He's a little more established. 
He's got his house, hopefully half paid off, three fourths paid off, and you can try to get more money out of people. That's the the philosophy that we do. We're a blue collar campus that, that a lot of teachers, a lot of you know middle class workers. And at some point, those middle class workers, not that they struggle when they're having kids, but you, you, you like you, you have kids. They're everywhere. You got to know every, almost everywhere your your di- where your money's going. You need to know where it's at. So we're I'm conscious of all that. I would never go to a person that has three kids. Hey, listen, we need you to donate. But you know, in ten years, when when his kids are older and out of college, hey, it's time to t- time to donate back to the program type of thing. Well, Him, Joe, Brent, Glav- hey, Joe Glavin owned a business. Yeah, and then now he's in education. Joe Glavin's probably got jars buried all over his backyard. He can yeah. just dig a jar up and send it to you. Top Brent Thompson's uh um Brent Thompson, uh, there you go. Uh, he's he's a tax guy, you know, he's a yeah, there you go. Doing, he's, he's a partner at his company doing real well. Yeah, Brent's remember a great Brian guy. Singleton? Brian Singleton's a lawyer out in uh Arizona New York somewhere. He's doing or Arizona, he's doing Is really well. He in well. Arizona? I thought he was in Arizona. He's been he's been all over places, but he, you know, he's doing really well. Um, so you try to find people that you know that that have done really well and I think a lot of times you, you find a guy like, you know, like Bill Drypolch has done amazing things for our program. He's the person that kind of got us all starting with the fundraising and doing it, you know, and, and he, if you ask him, why do you, why do you want to give back so much or why have you done so much? And if it wasn't for wrestling, he would never went up to college. He never went to Kent state university. So in his mind, he owes a lot back to it. At some point, I, I think I'm the same person. I, you know, yeah. I don't think I'm going to ever have Bill Drypolch type money. But at some point, I'll be able to say, if it wasn't for wrestling, I never would have had a degree or two or three that I have. And like I said, I got one child that's that's going. I got a daughter getting married this coming summer. So after I get through some of these uh, landmarks in life, I'll be able to have a little more money that I'll go back, be able to go back, and hopefully at some point be able to do something really big for Kent State Wrestling at some point in my my life before before it all ends, and I can leave a whole other legacy after my coaching legacy. That's that's my plan. You know, hopefully if it all works out and and things go like I hope they do. Um, 15 years from now, hopefully I can name a wrestling room after me or, or build something in my name that, that will, will carry my name on forever. Hopefully. I love it. <laughs> I love it. We got to get, listen, we got to get those, got to get uh, Glavin and Magistrali. I'm on them. We got I'm right. on them. I'm there on them. I'm going to, I'm going to be. How them about them. Mark Wentz? How about Mark? Mark Wentz has been on a bunch of TV shows. He's been, yeah, he's Mark's been doing good. Shaq. We got to get him to get Shaq involved. I'll tell you what, you get Shaq involved. <laughs> you're doing something right yeah him and mark went, yeah mark, mark went, built some uh he built a few things for he built, built the the rim sculpture on shack's property in georgia yes, yes. it's sweet so, yeah and he was like there every day and hanging out with shack and so sean's our mark's the little guy and yeah there's a picture he sent me of him it's like you know he's at his waistline he almost at his waistline yes yes Crazy. like a little guy yeah so. he's two he's over two feet taller than him yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He literally is. All right, Jim, do you have anything else for me? No, just uh, we got uh, Vegas, which is not Thanksgiving weekend. It's the first weekend, weekend in December. Hoping we can get some guys to do really well there that, you know, well, there are three guys that are ranked and can t- continue their rankings and go there and do something really big, make some more, you know, national splashes. And hopefully we can get some other guys some big wins. And then, really, if you look at it, we got the Virginia duels left. Besides that, it's all MAC competition and Ohio State. We wrestle at Ohio State December 11th, I believe. It's the weekend. It's the second Sunday in December. Is it um, after Iron at, Man? Yes, Iron Man's that Friday, Saturday, that Sunday. We're at Ohio State. Um, after that, like I said, we go to we go to uh, Virginia duels. We wrestle. I want to say four really good teams. You look at it like, man, we, we could we could have some tough matches there, but it is what it is. And then we get hopefully as hard as it will get, it will only get easier when we get in the MAC competition because our guys are seeing the best guys in the country. Love it, coach. All right. So I will see you at the Ironman and I will be at Coach Gray's December 23rd, five o'clock duel. Probably be uh, streaming that on Ohio Cast. Should be a good time. Yeah. Coach, thank you for the hopefully time. We'll one, hopefully we'll do one more of these the week after Vegas. Yes, week after Vegas sounds like what we're going to do. We'll wait, do one maybe before Christmas and then get, yeah. get it through the new year. Yeah, we probably will do one uh, before or after Coach Gray's meet. Perfect, perfect. Jim, thank you for the time. That's the that's a wrap for the – One more thing. Oh, Anybody oh. on here that's listening that, that has a question for us, me or you, or needs information about anything, my email is J-A-N-D-R-A-S-S at – kent.edu feel free to hit me up with anything 
Um, anything we can do to help you as, as an institution, if you're a, if you're an alumni, um, or if there's things that you you know, quite something that you want to hear me and you talk about, feel free to hit either one of us up so we can try to make this more relative to what actually other people want to hear. Because me and you are just going off the cusp here because I haven't gotten anything particular that people want to hear. We're we're yeah. giving what they think they want, what we think yeah. they want. <laughs> right. Jim, thank you for the time and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Same with you. Tell your family. Said hello. Go Kent State.